Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Thursday, the 3rd of September 2020, and the time has just gone 2042. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 7th until Friday the 11th of September. And we're currently seeing uh, a huge sell-off on US equity markets. Uh, the tech sector has come under enormous pressure. Text, big tech stocks like Apple, um, and Amazon and Facebook and so on have racked up huge gains uh, in the last few months. Uh, people have been talking about their lofty valuations for quite some time. Uh, we're now seeing uh, a, a, quite a large sell-off. And because there's been a sell-off in tech, in tech, that's weighed heavily on the likes uh, on the S&P 500. Uh, and we've also just kind of sparked a wider sell-off across the board. Um, keep in mind, US equity markets in particular have been very, very strong recently. So, so there's some people out there who are thinking this is the beginning of the end. There are others out there looking at it going, this is a long overdue correction. Um, but I guess we'll find out what, what the, uh, the true story is. Um, this video has been recorded uh, on Thursday, obviously in advance of the US non-farm payrolls report, so we don't know what those numbers uh, are going to look like. But what we saw in today's session on Thursday, before we had the huge tech sell-off, was we had a bit of uh, we had actually a fairly fair bit of confidence uh, for most of the European trading session. Uh, over in the US, uh, the Center for Disease Control uh, stated that the US health officials must must have in place procedures to distribute uh, a COVID-19 vaccine as early as November. That's not to say that there's going to be anything in place, a, a, a drug will have been developed by then, but if, if, they, if that body are putting in place, want th those uh, measures in place by as early as November, it would suggest that they believe, or they have, they believe that this is there is uh, some possibility we could have a vaccine in the next few months. That propped up European equity markets um, for much of the for much of the session. It is worth noting that Dr. Anthony Fauci, um, a specialist uh, in in, uh, in diseases, um, threw a bit of cold water on that um, on that belief. He said it's not impossible that a COVID-19 drug will be developed by 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 end by the end of October, but you know it's 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 unlikely. Uh, we also had f uh, more details of the. Uh, 100 billion euros um, stimulus package um, from the French government to assist the economy. Um, but um, nonetheless, uh, we have seen a fairly sharp sell-off um, in, in, in equities. The dollar has been firmer for the third day in a row, and we have seen pressure applied to US equity. We've seen pressure applied to commodities. Uh, taking a quick sneak preview at some of the big events next week, uh, we have the US, UK GDP, the kind of month-on-month uh, -month readings. Uh, we have an update from the interest rate decisions from the European Central Bank and the Bank of Canada. Um, no change is likely for, for both for both of those various central banks. Uh, and we also have US CPI. And keep in mind, uh, it wasn't that long ago, uh, the Federal Reserve altered their policy in relation to their, their inflation policy. Uh, they're happy to have an average target of, of, uh, of 2%. So they're content for inflation to run north of 2%. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll take a quick look at some of the major indices and th see how things are shaping up. Like I said, I'm recording this video on Thursday, so the price action, uh, the prices uh, could be, could be a be a bit uh, a bit uh, a bit old by the time this this video goes out. But if you take a look at the price action in the FTSE for the last few months, after achieving a multi-month high in June, we've been moving steadily lower the last few months. A series of lower lows and lower highs. So things are looking quite uh, negative on the, on the FTSE 100. If you press on lower from here, and if you have a size of break below 5,800, we could take us back down towards this zone here, the lows of mid-May in around 5,660. Uh, any snapback in the FTSE could incur resistance from this area here in around 6,000. You know, big, psycholo big psychological number and all that. Uh, the Euro market is in better shape than the than the FTSE 100. Uh, as we can see here uh, in today's session, as I mentioned, there was some positivity initially in Europe. Uh, it hit its hit a multi-month high, its highest level since February. But if we take a look at this daily candle, shaping up to be or could be has a potential to be a bearish engulfing from this this red rectangle here, the entire body. Um, of this candle appears to be engulfing the previous day's candle. 
which could be, if that is the case, we could see uh, we could see a move to the downside. We need to, need to have that confirmed by further losses from here. But if we do see a move to the downside, we could head back toward this blue line, the 50-day moving average, in a, which comes into play at 12,800. And notice how on a few occasions that metric nicely acted as support. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. And obviously, if you do manage to um, uh, uh, shake off you know, the, 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 um, the recent bearish sentiment, we could be looking at retesting uh, the recent highs, heading back, to, heading back north of 13,000 and retesting the recent highs. Taking a look at what's going on over on the S&P 500, with the US markets. So we had a series here of intraday and record record closes, record intraday highs, record highs has been 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 posted. Uh, it's always the way people don't think too much of it when the market's going up. When you have a colossal red candle like this, some people uh, go running. But keep in mind, um, we're currently on the S and P 500 at 3,437. Just bear in mind, we got close enough. We got up towards 3,000. 588 or so in the last couple of days not too far away from 3600 back in late june the pro apologies it wasn't that long ago um on the s p 500 um in in um in late july we were at 3200 so we came a considerable amount of, of uh we've had a considerable rally um between you know basically in the in the month of August went from around three thousand two hundred there thereabouts to up towards three thousand six hundred so it's a phenomenal rally so don't be surprised if from time to time you have an excessive move to the downside like this if we do press on lower from here we could head back towards three thousand four hundred there's a few occasions that area acted as, as kind of as, as a bit of an area of both resistance and support and if we go below that. Uh, the lows of, of mid-August in around 3,350 could potentially act as support. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the video how we've seen some strength uh, in the US dollar the last couple of sessions. It is worth noting the rebound in the dollar came after after some after um, after it fell to a 28-month low during the week. So the highest here we're seeing on euro dollar on Tuesday. It was a 28-month high euro dollar. Conversely, it was a 28-month low on the dollar index. So, of course, we've had a great run on the euro. It's traded north of one spot 20, but then what do you know? It turns it turns lower. Uh, we're now we're still holding above the kind of 118 mark, um, but the wider upward trend is still intact. So, if we do, if the wider trend does uh, does continue, we could be looking heading back towards one spot 20, and if we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards one spot 21.40. Uh, if you do drop back below one spot 18, this zone in here in around one spot 69.96 could act as support. And if we go below that, the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, and that comes into play in around one spot 16.32. As I mentioned, we have an, up, an update from the ECB next week, although there are no um, any kind of tweaks, there are no kind of um, changes to be expected. Uh, pound dollar has also had a great run recently. Once again, because of the dollar weakness uh, on Tuesday, it hit its highest level since December 2019. So multi-month high has been racked up, but the rebound in the dollar has kind of put pressure on sterling the last couple of last couple of sessions. It appeared to be in an edging lower. If we do continue these, these this pullback, we could head towards one spot 32. Uh, and if, if we have a larger, um, if the pullback continues, we could head all the way back potentially to one spot 30. You know, it being one of the uh, big numbers and so on. Um, but notice we've had a, a wider upward trend is still very much intact. And if you press on higher from here, we could look at retesting uh, the recent highs. And a move beyond that could take us up to one spot 35.15, a level last seen uh, on the, the night of the UK general election uh, in mid of December last year. Um, we also have seen a decent move in, in dollar CAD today, the, the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. And next week we get an update from the Bank of Canada. Um, so we've seen considerable weakness in dollar CAD at the last number of months. 
uh, but, but we have actually seen a fairly decent rebound in, in, in the last 48 hours. Once again, this ties in with the broader theme of a, of a rebound in the US dollar. But the question is, will it, la will it last? Because in the, la in the past four or five weeks, there's been a number of occasions where the US dollar has had a bit of a rebound for a couple of sessions or maybe three sessions and then turned over on itself again. So this, pull, this uh, move to the upside in dollar CAD could be just an example of the market heading up towards, say, somewhere like 132 or one spot 32.40, and then turning lower on itself again, or could genuinely be uh, the beginning of a of a correction from here. In the last couple of months, the U.S. dollar has acted as a bit of a safe haven play. So this aggressive sell-off that we've, we've seen in stocks um, today could be the beginning of a larger correction. And if that is the case, we could see dollar strength. And if that is the case, we could see you know, the dollar press on higher from here. If you take out the kind of one spot, spot 32, 40 area, we could even look to head up back up towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average in at one spot, 33.70. But of course, if the dollar cad turns over itself yet again, if you take out one spot 30, uh, that could head us, take us back down towards one spot 29.51 or one spot 29.26. Um, other big events out next week, um, we have um, CPI and PPI from China, as I mentioned, UK GDP, um, European, inf which is their monthly report, by the way, uh, European Central Bank interest rate decision, Bank of Canada interest rate decision, um, US CPI. We also have, um, as, we, as we do every week, the US jobless claims. We'll have full year figures out from Dunelm. We have first half figures out from Morrison's. Uh, we first have figures out from JD Sports. Uh, we've uh, and we also have uh, second quarter numbers out from Slack Technologies, the messaging company, and finally we also have uh, fourth quarter numbers from Peloton. Uh, thank you for listening. That's all for this week. Have a good trading week and good luck.